Hello, this is Todd Luck, and this is a review of John Carter, Gods of the Forgotten. This is an Edgar Rice Burroughs universe novel, and it continues the story of Burroughs' original Barsoom novels. And before we get started, I did want to point out this is an official John Carter of Mars shirt, and Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated does sell this on Amazon, so you can get this on the Amazon app or Amazon.com. And I think this is a great time for this novel to be out because I think for a long time, a lot of us didn't understand who John Carter was or didn't know who he was. I never heard of the character when I was a kid in the 80s and then in the 90s, I was aware that there were these John Carter figures and I had the incredibly gorgeous Joe Jesco painted cards of John Carter. And I knew the Mars novels was a huge influence on superheroes like Martian Manhunter and Starfire. But I didn't really know anything about John Carter. All I knew is that there were these old novels where everyone on Mars dressed like He-Man and flew around in airships and there were four-armed green Martians and that was the extent of my knowledge of Barsoom. But now between the comics and the movies, I think a lot of people in the last 12 years have discovered John Carter and we now know and appreciate who this character is. No matter how you were introduced to John Carter, I think this is going to be a great novel for you to get. If you are coming in from the movies, you are in for a real treat because you're going to find out what happened after John Carter got back to Mars. And you're going to find out what's been going on on Mars and you're going to get to meet the family that he got to have after he married Deja Thores. If you're coming in from the comics, I think you're going to feel right at home. The comics are pretty close to the novels. Just keep in mind they don't count in the continuity of the novel, so a few things here and there are going to be a little bit different. If you're coming in from the novels, you're going to get another great Barsoom adventure, and you're also going to get to find out what's been happening on Barsoom and what's been happening with all those characters from the old novels. It feels like catching up with old friends. And even if you're not familiar with John Carter and Barsoom, which is what the natives of Mars call their own planet, I think this is a great place to jump on. This writer is very, very good at explaining backstory and orienting a new reader. As far as I go, I'm kind of half and half. I've read five out of the 11 Mars novels, and so some of those references that were made in this novel I'm familiar with, and in others I don't know at all. But I never was lost, I was never intimidated, and the references I understood completely, and they just made me want to read more Burroughs novels. And though you're not going to need to, believe me, after you read this new novel, you're going to want to read those old Burroughs novels. And so they are available in a wide variety of formats. But what I want you to keep in mind is that Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated is currently doing printings of all the Burroughs novels in the Burroughs Authorized Editions. And these have Joe Jesco covers and a lot of wonderful archival material in the back. And they're starting with Tarzan and they've got 10 Tarzan novels left. They're publishing them four at a time. So in a couple years, they'll start on the Mars novels. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind for uh, things that you can get for your bookshelf in the future. And so this novel is part of the Swords of Eternity super arc. And so that's running through the Edgar Rice Burroughs universe novels. And essentially, the novels are self-contained, but they have subplots that run through them. And so the first novel in that story is Carson of Venus, Edge of All Worlds. And then the second novel is Tarzan, Battle for Pellucidar. And then the third novel is John Carter, Gods of the Forgotten. And then there's one last novel in that story arc called Victory Harbin, Fires of Halos. That hasn't come out yet, but that is in the works. The super arc is tied together by this subplot with uh, Jason Gridley and a new character named Victory Harbin, who for various science fiction-y reasons are bouncing between worlds. They're like teleporting between like Venus and Mars and the moon and stuff like that. And so Jason Gridley will actually appear uh, sometimes briefly, sometimes a little longer in the novels themselves. And I got to tell you, um, I think his appearance in here fits super well. Um, he just fit effortlessly into the storyline. 
He helps bring this novel story forward, and this novel actually helps bring Jason Gridley's story forward. I just loved it to death. The new character, Victory Harbin, her part of it is told in these novelettes at the back of the novels, which will have her in a different world than the novel is set in. And so here it's Victory Harbin in the world of the Moon Maid. And speaking of novelettes, if you finish this and you're like me and you want more, Gary Grable, who wrote this novel, is also writing a novelette with Jason Gridley called Across the Moons of Mars. It's going to be in the back of Red Axe of Pellucidar. It's a novel from the 80s that was never published officially, and it's the novels by John Eric Holmes, and it's up for pre-order right now, and so that's where you can get the next Barsoom story. And so Gods of the Forgotten is available pretty much any place you get new books from, and you can get it hardcover, softcover, Kindle, or audiobook. And if you get it from edgaricebirds.com, they will throw in a free trading card. This is one of Tara, John Carter's daughter. So let me talk about the novelette in the back of this book first. It's called Victory Harbin and the Sword Winds of Vana. And Vana is this tropical world inside of the moon and it's an interesting world in its own right it's got its own monsters and all that good stuff it's inhabited uh, by folks who look like pale humans but it's also inhabited by these folks they're called the vana and oftentimes they're misrepresented as centaurs on covers but this is how they actually look they can walk on all fours and carry stuff on their back like a horse very similar to the cart titan and attack on titan and the humans on this world uh, have these wings that they can fly on their, you know, mechanical artificial wings, and they have this uh, kind of packet of gas on them to help them float. By the way, this is decades before Gardner Fox would create Hawkman. And so the novelette is a short story in the truest sense of the term, but it's able to kind of build these characters that you can identify with and care about in a very short period of time. It managed to find some humanity in what is a very savage world where literally everyone is trying to eat everyone else. But it was very engaging. I really enjoyed it, and I hope we get to go back to the world inside of the moon soon because it is a very interesting place. It did a great job of explaining itself to the reader. I think it oriented itself quite well to someone who wasn't all that familiar with the subject matter. But if you're interested in learning about some of the things that were referenced, you should pick up the original Moon Maid novel by Edgar Rice Burroughs and also Moon Maid, The Three Keys. It's a three-issue miniseries by American Mythology, and it's also quite good. So talking about the main novel. So it's not illustrated, but it does have this really cool map of Barsoom with these character illustrations, which you will definitely come to appreciate as you read the novel. And the novel has this absolutely gorgeous wraparound cover and it's showing you the city of helium which does appear in quite a few chapters and we have john carter we have his daughter tara and the disembodied head on spider legs is named geck and don't worry geck is on our side and just to address some inevitable fan comments on how uh tara is portrayed here this is novel accurate so in the novel gary gravel knows his audience very well and so the first thing he does is tell you what Deja Thoris is wearing. And she is wearing a fancy harness because harnesses are pretty much what Burroughs describes everyone on Mars wearing on a normal basis. And so I think that's pretty obvious in the novels, but a lot of people miss that and think it's like a thong and pasties or they walk around with all their private parts hanging out, but that's just not the case, at least according to Burroughs. Now, you also notice that she is sporting a belly button, even though Martians are born in eggs. And this is confirmed in this novel. Uh, it's addressed, I believe, page 50. And so that I don't think was addressed one way or the other in the Burroughs novel, but then that would mean, yes, indeed, they do have navels. Why? Because Burroughs describes red Martians as looking exactly like humans, except for the hue of their skin. And thus, if there was another exception to that that made them look different than us, like, for instance, missing a navel, he would have said that. So, yes, Martians have belly buttons. I know that there are people who swear up and down their entire blog post devoted to Martians not having belly buttons. And so hopefully this revelation will not 
upset fans. But if it does, I mean, you could always start a change.org petition. Hashtag no navels on Mars. Barsoonian belly buttons aside, what do I think about this story? Well, first of all, let me thank Gary Gravel for writing this. This is the John Carter novel I never knew I needed. And thank you for Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated for letting him write this novel. This is not a safe novel. This novel doesn't begin anything like you would think it would. It doesn't have a kidnapping. It doesn't have an attack. It doesn't have, you know, some grand villain doing something that John Carter has to stop. It's just exploring John Carter as a human being, what he does in his life, and just making you connect emotionally to the character. And it just works so well. I mean, I never thought I would actually ever identify with John Carter. I mean, I've always loved his adventures, but I never found him as like identifiable human being. And that's what this novel does with him. It is just, it is just great. I mean, there are times when this novel does not feel anything like Burroughs, but I think that's wonderful because it explores the characters in a completely different way that just is just so wonderful. But then there are times also when this book feels more like Burroughs than any of the other Edgar Rice Burroughs Universe books. And it's just very, very well done. And one of the really unique things about this novel is that for the first half of it, there's no quest or anything. It's just John Carter living his life. And of course, stuff happens and he has all kinds of different types of adventures, which are really cool and you just never know what's going to happen. But the crux of it is just John Carter living his life. You get to find out what it's like to be the warlord of Mars. You get to see him on the job. You get to see him, what he does in his spare time. You get to see him spend time with his family. You get to see him uh, spend time with his wife, his son, his extended family, some of which I think are introduced in this novel. And of course, his daughter, who is a supporting character here. Uh, she was actually the star of Chessmen of Mars, where she was kind of this bratty, spoiled teenager. And she is just a wonderful character here. Uh, Gary Grable found the perfect way to translate, you know, what she was like in Chessmen of Mars into adulthood. Um, she is a supporting character here instead of a main character uh, like in Chessmen because we're focusing on John Carter. And that is not a bad thing because John Carter here is a really, really wonderful character. And as much as I love following John Carter's life and seeing him with his family, you know, Warlord knows best, I really love the part where we get to the villains as well. It's done equally as well, and we spend a lot of time with them, and this is the part where it feels 100% pure Burroughs because we have a new lost civilization here that has a lot of familiar elements to it, but it's done in a completely fresh, unique way. We have this very multi-layered, multi-faceted society that we very thoroughly explore, and it's filled with all these different characters, with all these different complex motivations, and it has its own history and religion and politics and all of that, just like what Burroughs used to do in his novels, and I love it. And the villains themselves are great. They are unexpected original and menacing, but they have a logical motivation. I, you know, I felt like they made sense about as much as anything in science fantasy can. And the way that they're defeated isn't done in some kind of over-the-top movie final fight where, you know, the hero gets in some final battle with one villain who, if he defeats that one guy, everything is solved. It's done in a much more realistic manner that was very, very refreshing to read. And so if you read the plot synopsis for the novel, it does mention that the villains have been there since John Carter got to Mars and there's kind of a conspiracy involved. And don't worry about that. I know sometimes that can go in some weird convoluted places. It works super well here. This is not here to make anything more complicated. This is not here to explain things that don't need to explain. There are just natural gaps throughout the Nars novels 
that this fills in those stories. Oftentimes there'll be questions that maybe you forgot about or maybe you didn't even think to ask in the first place that you'll get answers to here. And it's just so well written. There's just very clever lines and phrases just throughout this thing that make it a joy to read. Even the most mundane scenes, like for instance, John Carter uh, eats a meal with some guests early on. And he says that the meal was a little bit rich for his warrior's palate. And I'm like, oh my God, I love that phrase. I am so using that in real life. I'm not a finicky eater. I have a warrior's palate. So the only thing this novel is really lacking is significant roles for John Carter's better known supporting cast in the story. However, I think that was a necessary sacrifice for the story being told here. Because this story, when we get to the action and adventure parts of it, are all about John Carter being isolated. And so that isolation being cut off from his family and his friends in those scenes is part of what gives this book its suspense and its unpredictability and makes it work. So... I think, you know, I really wish we could have gotten, you know, more Tars Tarkas and Dejah Torres and all that in here. But there's going to be other novels that will give us opportunities for that, or at least I hope so. And I hope Gary Gravel writes them. And so I cannot recommend this novel enough. It is tremendous. It is an accomplishment. And even if you don't normally read novels, if you like John Carter, you need this. It is the definitive answer of what happens to him after those original novels. And this is uh, something that comics have been trying to do for the last 50 years. And there have been some great stories here and there with the Mars comics, but this, this is just a whole nother level. And honestly, it honestly feels like I've just read an entire definitive run of a character in a comic series because this is thicker than the other Swords of Eternity uh, novels and it's got smaller words in it. Uh, the text is smaller, so it's way longer than the other novels and you're going to go through so much. You're going to go through uh, adventure and science mystery and horror and family drama and sword fights and just everything you can think of and probably quite a few things you can't and it's all good guys i just this this is really just a fantastic novel and i want to thank edgar rice Burroughs incorporated for sending me all of the swords of eternity uh novels that exist right now and um victory harbin is coming and when that comes out i will be doing a review and letting you guys know uh what that's like all right, guys, like and subscribe for more videos. And until next time, see ya.